the, the way we, we came across to know each other, um, Be Real was dancing in a, well, Be Real was a break dancer in a crew um, that uh, some of my friends hung out in, and that's how I met him. And, um, and after a while, um, you know, he just started rapping on his own. And we started, we formed our first crew, but it wasn't, it wouldn't be, that was around, uh, shit, I don't even remember what year, but we didn't start Cypress Hill to like 88, 89, you know? And, uh, you know, since, since we first started hanging out, um, it, it just became just regular, regular hangout since then, you know what I mean? And then, you know, um, by the time we met Mugs, we were already, all of us were already rapping and whatnot. So, um, we just... We just had this idea this, that, you know, we were going to be successful and we never really thought anything other than that, you know, and, um, and we just kept on hip hopping and hip hopping. And, and eventually, you know, we started meeting people, you know, and that that were in the business in the industry already. And uh, we just kept going from there. Our first group was called DVX. And um, that was around for maybe three or four years. And then we eventually started Cypress Hill. But um you know, when you're, when you, when we were young like that, of course, you were, we were thinking that, you know, oh, we're going to blow up and be major rap stars and this and that, you know, it never once occurred to us that that might not happen, <laughs> but that's how we started Cypress Hill and, uh, you know, and before Cypress Hill was, you know, a rap group, it was like a street football team, kind of like a gang, more, you know what I mean, more of a gang. You know, and then when we started our group, we didn't know what to name it. So we were just like, let's just name it after the neighborhood, you know, Cypress Hill. And, and that's where we started at, you know. Yeah, definitely. It's It's been used um, by many groups in that aspect. You know, uh, Public Enemy was one. Uh, Boogie Down Productions, when KRS-One had to go do his own thing. He did that many times. Rage Against the Machine, System of a Down. Um, I mean, there's a lot of bands and you go as far back as Bob Dylan and, and and stuff like that. You know, there was many groups, you know, trying to uh, put a mes message across. And sometimes they weren't meaning to be political, but it ended up being that way. And it's very much that way now and these days, you know, people either want to convey some political beliefs that they have, or they want to just tell you what's on their mind, the way they believe things should be or whatever. So yeah, it's definitely a vehicle to be able to express your, your opinion or your feelings about something. And, you know, there's a lot of people that have those same thoughts and those same feelings and that, that, that makes, that makes it easier for you to, to, attached to that album to to find something that you relate to but then there's people that don't want politics in their music they just want music to take them away from the politics and the serious nature of the things going on around the world so you you have to have a balance you know people that are just making music to make people feel better or to make them you know to take away from whatever shit that's going on in their head and then there's other people that want to provoke that thought and to make you realize what's going on you know but the problem is is that you have two always two different agendas when you deal with politics there's people that are telling you the things that are fucked up and like the things that we should fix and there's the people who disagree with them who are constantly you know trying to uh devalue what these other people are trying to convey, you know, and, it, and it's, that's, that's the part that, that's, that sucks when you have a political message is that you're, you're always going to be under fire, but those are the chances you take as an artist. And, and a lot of these groups that take those chances, you know, are very well respected and loved, you know, rage against the machine. Everybody loves them, even though there's a small portion of people that, maybe don't agree with what they talk about or what or in their beliefs, you know, but uh, that's, that's the thing. And you have to make your choice on what type of band you're going to be, you know, and uh, those bands made their choices. And, and for some of them, it was a great choice. Some of them, not so great.
Um, I mean, you know, it has its positive and negatives. You know, um, the positive is that you got your music out there, your success, so that you you know you have a career, so you can take care of your family, take care of yourself, and you know, do something positive with your life. On the negative aspect. It's, you know, now you're not a private figure anymore. You're a public figure. So a lot of the, a lot of the things that uh, a private individual has, you no longer have, and you have to accept that. And, you know, words like role model get placed upon you when you're not necessarily looking at yourself as a role model. You're looking at yourself as an artist. And then the criticisms that you face on some of the decisions you make creatively and artistically and maybe some of the concepts of the songs, you know, if you do want to speak on, on, on a political, you know, of a, a political nature in, in one of your songs. Now, you know, you have the whole world that's, you know, got you under the microscope, whereas before you were just under the radar. And so those are a couple of the things that you give up. And then, you know, stuff like this, we're on the road away from our families for, for you know, a length of time that, uh, you end up missing home and missing your family and they miss you and stuff like that. But it's all the sacrifices that you make to be a part of this game and to, you know, be an artist and to, to um, play your music across the world. And we gladly take that that risk and, and those chances and, and, and those sacrifices because we believe in what we do. We believe in ourselves and we believe in our music. So, you know, it, it's... It's not all what it seems to be from the outside, like people think. It's glamorous all the time, and you know, artists have no problems, and <laughs> they're rich. They live in these mansions, and it's very much not like that. It, there's a lot of misconception in what it is, but we still do it because we love it, and we have a passion for for making music. So you know, we gladly will take all those things, regardless of how you know, exhausting it might be, how, uh, you know, the criticisms you might get, you know, you just take it and you run with it. It's more important to make music, to make hip hop music. Um, I still feel the same about fame that I feel now that I do about it back then. Like, I don't really care for it. You know what I mean? To be an artist and to make hip hop and to be able to perform your hip hop, that was the most important thing for us. You know what? Yeah. I mean, at first, you know, when we first on our first couple of records, you know, it was all gung ho Cypress. But then we started seeing the effects of, of Cypress Hill in the audience, you know, and when uh, when they asked us to uh, to record on the Judgment Night soundtrack with uh, Sonic Youth and Pearl Jam, um, you know, I, the song with Pearl Jam that just opened me up to a whole other like, oh, wow. You know, I really liked how I sound on that track, you know, and, um, you know, from then on, we just like whatever came down the line that we thought could be, you know, an interesting uh, collaboration or a powerful collaboration. You know, we've tried it. We've never we have never shied away from it. You know, um, we believe that the, the all the chances and all the risks that we've taken through our career has helped, you know, keep our longevity, you know. Yeah, I care about them. <laughs> I don't give a shit about them, you know, because when we first came out, a lot of people dogged us that we sounded like the Beastie Boys and, you know, that a lot of people didn't know where we were coming from. And once the album started to have success, a lot of those same critics started giving us praise and, and shit like that. So, you know... To me, it doesn't matter how a critic receives our album. It, it matters to me how the fans receive it because they're the ones who we're trying to make the records for in the first place. The critics, you know, they could eat shit as far as I'm concerned. Whether, you know, I don't care if they give us a good or bad review, to be honest with you. If they give us a good review, that's great. You know, I, I appreciate that. If they give us a bad one, I don't care because the reaction that we get when we play these songs for the fans that tells us that we've done our job correctly and, and we've we've motivated our fans once again. You know, if we go out there 
and we play these songs and nothing happens, then maybe the critics are right, and that's fine, you know. But uh, if you if you base your career off, you know, caring about what critics say about you, you know, you'll have a horrible time making music because not everybody's gonna like your your music. You can't please everybody. There might be an overwhelming um, number of people that love your shit and that small portion that hate it. Or it might be in reverse, an overwhelming number that hate it and a small portion that love it. Either way, if you're a musician and you're an artist, you have to do what you feel is right. And you have to try to please your fans and not worry about these critics. If one of these critics happens to be a fan, that's great. If they're not, so be it, you know, but for me, fuck them. Depends on the show, you know, I wouldn't be a judge on a show that I knew nothing about, you know, it would have to be something that I have some sort of knowledge of because to be a judge and not have knowledge of what you're judging, then you're useless, you know, so I would have to take into consideration what, what they're asking me to judge, you know. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> I think uh, it was in like our first real showcase as Cypress Hill was in New York at uh, SOBs. Sony had flown us down there to to break us. We were a West Coast group, but they signed us and they wanted to break us on the East Coast first. So our first real show as Cypress Hill after our name change and everything was, was at SOBs in New York City. Mm -hmm. It was a great show. Good. Great show. We were very green still, but it was a good show. <laughs>